All right, so this is going to be part two of my guide, and this is going to be the uh, beginner's version. So I'm actually going to break this part up into this part and another part. So this is just going to be about functionality of Mod Organizer 2 if you're unfamiliar with it. If you already are familiar with it, you can just skip on to part three, which is just installing the mods. Um, but I figure people that uh, are brand new and want some more information about Mod Organizer, I'd do an extra video in between um, so you would uh, get some more information on uh, how to use it. The, um, the full guide, the modding uh, complete overhaul guide, part two is already done. Uh, there's a link on part one's description. That one ended up being a... Um, text guide uh, because the video just ended up being way too long it was going to be like a five plus hour video so I just went for the text guide uh, but the next part of this for the absolute beginner will be a, a video walkthrough so the main thing with mod organizer um, is that it uses a virtual data folder so in your Skyrim VR install uh, folder your data folder is where all mods go so these are all the main files for the game um, and your mods would normally go in here well instead of installing mods here mod organizer installs the mods to a directory and then after you launch the game through mod organizer it combines them and puts them in a virtual folder so if you actually go here and go down to virtual folder you can actually look and see exactly what your virtual data folder looks like um, so when you come here and you hit run to start the game that is what it's doing uh, there's a lot of benefits to that one of them being that you can always check the game unmodded so if you think you're having issues with a mod and you want to make sure it's not your computer you can just go directly into Steam and launch the game and it'll be completely vanilla unless you manually added anything into this data folder. Um, so that's really nice. Um, the other thing is how it handles profiles. So you have two different kinds of profiles. You have uh, internal profiles and then you have like instances. So when I mean instances, you can basically make different complete versions of the game and you can make as many as you want so right now here's my beginners one if you click here it'll ask you to restart you can create a new instance so I can go to my other guide and now I'm here with all these mods loaded from my other guide so this allows you and these are all in different folders in different locations um, so it allows you to make completely new mod lists um, outside of the main game's folders, and you can switch between them at any time. Um, you just exit out, and you just got to make sure when you make the folders, you put them to new locations so you're not pulling on the same place and overriding stuff. Um, and then within within each instance you can actually have multiple profiles so if you go to manage and uh, create you can make a new profile uh, you can name it testing or whatever you want to do and what you what that'll let you do is when you switch to that profile it'll have all the same files but you can rearrange things you can add stuff to this profile within the same folders that you're already uh, using. I don't really use this portion of the profiles too much. I more use the instances um, for multiple builds of the game. Um, it's also a nice way if you're, um, oh, I gotta switch back. So if you're, uh, if you're doing like um, SSE or old rim and you want an instance of that then you can have an instance of special edition and then you could have an instance of Skyrim um, VR so 
All right, outside that, uh, a couple of things. Uh, because of this virtual data folder, whenever you have a program you're running externally, so there's a bunch of different applications that uh, you can use in Skyrim, you have to load them in, basically you have to load them from within Mod Organizer 2. And how you do that is you come up to this gear icon and you add that application here and you link it and you have an add here and then it'll show up here and then when you go to hit it and you go to run then it creates that virtual data folder for that whatever application you're going to run so it knows where to look for all the mods if not if you just ran it on your desktop you wouldn't get any mods because that virtual data folder was not built um, so then I just wanted to talk about uh, the layout. So you have your mods and your plugins. And this here, you also have your downloads. Uh, you can also look at your data folder, virtual data folder here. Uh, it'll list your saves if you have them. And this will list your BSAs. So BSAs are just like, uh, you can think of them like uh, Bethesda's version of a zip file. Um, it'll list all mods that have one of those. So your plugins are where all your records are. So when um, a mod author builds a mod that adds new stuff to the game or changes stuff, it has a corresponding plugin. Now, not all mods have plugins. So that's one important distinction when you're modding is you have mods, but then you have mods with plugins. And the main difference is a mod without a plugin is usually going to be a vanilla replacement so like a new texture a new mesh uh, that's just replacing a vanilla one that doesn't need any special um, extra information to the game it's just straight out replacing it um, so you'll see a lot of those with texture mods where they don't actually have plugins i'll switch over to my other ones because i have more mods on there to show you real quick um, but just some example like real 3D walls here. If I look at the files, there's no plugin. It's just textures because it's just replacing default textures. Um, so one nice thing about here is when how Mod Organizer does it uh, with the coloring is so what the coloring means is if you click on a mod, anything that lights up in red means that mod has files that overwrite the mod you just clicked. So every single one of these has some sort of file that overwrites a file in this mod. And to find out what that is, if you want, you right click, go to information, and you're going to go to conflicts. And this will go through and tell you exactly which file, um, which file conflicts with what. Um, and on the other side, if a if you click here, anything above in green uh, means that the file, the one that you clicked on, is overriding all these above. So this one is overriding files, and and same thing. You can click information conflicts, and it'll tell you, and it'll also give you two. Uh, two sides of information you'll get conflicted files and then you'll get files that are provided by this mod um, so on here I got both sides if I go down I got files overwriting it and I have files that it's overwriting so it'll give you both of those in that and when you're building biz big lists it's really important to kind of understand these kind of conflicts what's overwriting what um, which is one reason I really don't like Vortex and the uh, layouts because you got to be able to easily see all these uh, when you're doing that. Um, another nice feature when you're looking at plugins, if you click on one, let me get out of that here. So if I click on one here and I'm not sure what mod is associated with that, it'll automatically light up for you. So right there, Obis, Obis. So I. If I'm trying to like order these around and I'm looking around trying to find out which mod goes where I can click on it and then just there it is so that's 
And it's kind of important that you want to mostly keep this order in line with this order. It's not important for everything, but most of the time uh, it's pretty important. Um, what else? Okay, so another thing, nice feature of Mod Organizer is the updates. Uh, most of Mod, pretty much all of them have, all the Mod Managers have some kind of update feature. Um, so all you do is you click this icon here, check for updates. And what this will do is it compares the version to what's on Nexus. Now it's not 100% accurate, so you kind of got to go and visit the Nexus website to make sure there's actually an update because sometimes it's just the mod uh, the mod author didn't number their thing right or maybe you have a patch and the patch number doesn't show up right so you can go to Nexus and that one says it should be uh, version 1.2 so down here so we can see this has a version 2.0 so then I could update it, install it. So if I went here and updated this, I'll show you real quick. And all right, so on here, whenever you're updating a mod or copying files into a mod, you always want to merge. If you hit replace, that replaces the entire mod with the files from whatever you're installing. So if this was just a patch, you want to merge the files into the already existing folder. If I replaced it, all I would get was the patch and then the mod would be broken because you're just installing a patch. Um, if you were installing this and you wanted it named something differently, if you were uh, organizing, like you wanted your patches organized differently, all you'd have to do is either drop this down or just type in something here so it's got a new name and then you won't get that you won't get this window it'll just go as a new mod so here you always want to select merge when you're adding a patch or an update to a mod unless the mod author specifically says uh, replace the old one so here we merge it and then you see it disappeared from this list. So it updated the right one. So say you look and this version is actually the newest version and um, you don't want to update it or it's a false, false update. You can go to ignore update and that'll get rid of it as well. Uh, and then it won't show up again until there's another file version change. Um, if it is right, you can go here to information and this version might be just wrong. You can type in whatever the one is on Nexus. Maybe it's sometimes this like if there's uh, letters here or something or like different amount of uh, decimal points, it doesn't pick them up right. So you can kind of just edit this to match the one on Nexus and click uh, enter here and then it should turn green and then you can close it and it'll disappear. Um, yeah, that's really it for updates. So those are pretty easy. Um, if you don't want to look at this anymore, you just go to clear all filters and you'll get back to your main one. Um, another thing I want to mention is sorting. So when you're sorting your mods, you usually want to have them in the pri priority view. So from lowest to highest, uh, cause that's the order the game loads your mods from lowest to highest. I've seen some people had this on uh, name sorting and it's a whole giant mess and they had no idea what was going on because um, they were trying to install this. This was in priority order. This was in um, name order. And they're like, You're, it's not m matching up when I install them. But all you have to do is click on priority and it'll line it up nice. Um, another thing when you're done with your order, I would always make a backup. So for both of them, you make a backup of your plugins. You just click it, it'll automatically do it and make a backup of your mod order here. Uh, in case something happens, um, you move something around and you forgot where you put something, uh, you can always reload, uh, restore your backup. Uh, it's especially important when you have a huge list and you're, you're trying to organize stuff and 
something happens and you don't remember where something's supposed to go and that kind of thing, you just have that backup you can easily load again. Um, aside from that, another nice feature is the hide plugin feature. So say you have a mod that has some extra plugins that you don't need for whatever reason. Uh, maybe it's a patch or just something that installed with it that you didn't need. If you go to information here, go to optional ESPs. And what's nice about this is it just basically hides the plugin. So if you bring it up to here and click OK, it's hidden, but it's not deleted. So if you ever had to bring it back or whatever, you can just bring it back. Um, so in one of my guides, or my complete guide, I have people do that a whole bunch of times, just hiding the plugin because I already merged the information from that plugin to my patch, so it's not needed anymore. It's just, there's a limit. So you can only have 255 of these plugins before the game will crash. So if you have any more than that, the game will automatically crash when you try to launch it. Um, so it's important to uh, manage your plugin list when you start building a bigger list. For my beginner's guide, it's not going to really matter because there's not very many plugins, but um, just when you get more into modding, it gets a little more important. Another nice feature is right clicking and open an explorer. That'll let you go right into the mods folder. You can edit the files, move stuff around if you're editing stuff. Um, just a nice quick way so you don't have to go to my folder here and then into the folder and find that mod in my uh, my list of folders. So uh, that's a nice feature. Uh, what else? Uh, another one is uh, the symbols. So the heart with the question mark just means you haven't endorsed the mod on Nexus. So if you right click it and hit endorse, uh, It'll give it a couple seconds and it'll go away, and that'll automatically give an endorsement to that mod on Nexus. Um, the plus and minus is just what we were talking about earlier. That means um, minus means mods, other mods are overriding files in that mod, and the plus means it's overriding files from other mods, and plus minus means it's doing both. Um, if you ever get a silver lightning bolt, that means the mod is doing nothing because it's completely overwritten by another mod. Um, so usually that means it can be disabled um, or it's in the wrong spot and you wanted it down here or whatever, uh, that kind of thing. But if yeah, if you see that silver lightning bolt, the uh, it's completely redundant because it's not doing anything. Another symbol to look into is this one, uh, the little castle with the question mark, that means it is an old rim mod. So a lot of old rim mods will work. Um, it's just a good indication that it is one. And if you know it's one that works and you don't want that symbol there, you can just right click and do mark as converted slash working and that symbol will go away. Um, these are just the version numbers. Um, and it's telling you that this is like the update notification saying there's a newer version. Um, and then you'll get these a lot of the times when you have mods that aren't on Nexus because it's not really sure where to look. And you get these little calendar ones. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's about it for that. Uh, it has a category setting. I don't really use the categories too much because I do all my sorting by the priority based on how it's loaded. Um, so I always just use the priority view. Um, what else we got? Okay, so another another feature it has is up here is your warnings. So this is going to tell you if there's any issues. And right now you can see the two. So if I click on this, it'll give you a little notification of the warnings. Uh, missing masters means that there's a plugin in this list here that has a requirement that's not installed. So you can find out what that is very easily by finding the ones with the uh, little warning triangle here and mouse over it. Now, if you look at where it says missing masters, it'll tell you exactly which master it's missing. 
and then you'd have to go and see what you did um, and why that's why that master's missing so like for example that one was the true Skyrim weapons and it was missing because we hit it on previously so if I go here and hit close it's back here um, but it's not going to be in the right order so I could always go here restore my backup it'll go back to the right order and the triangles are gone so that's uh, that's just one thing. You usually have a one here um, that's telling you there's files in your overwrite directory. So what the overwrite directory is, is if mod organizer has files to write and it doesn't know where to put them specifically, it puts them in a folder called overwrite. So if you go all the way down here and you double click on this, this is your overwrite folder and there's usually going to be um, some logs, uh, some cache files, backups and stuff. You can make new mods out of these, but you, it's not going to matter. You can just leave them in here. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, if you ever want to clear it out, uh, usually these aren't permanent things that you have to keep, but you can just open it and go in there. So yeah, overwrites just just think of it as like a mod folder at the very end of your list. So if you actually put something in there, it's going to load at the very end of your list. Um, but if it, yeah, it's basically just mod organizer doesn't know where to put it. It doesn't, it can't put it in a mod folder. So it just throws it in your overwrite folder, but that's all that, uh, all that is. So you don't really have to worry about that warning, but always look up here. Cause if it has the two, it probably means you have a missing master somewhere, so just scan through real quick and see which ones. Um, on here, these icons, uh, the little chest icon means that it's a uh, has a BSA file, so you can go to archives here and you can see all these. Uh, the importance of BSA files are is they load before loose files, so. A loose file is just basically a folder. So if you go to a mod and texture folder, that's a loose because it's not compressed into a BSA. They're just files. Um, when the game loads, it loads these BSAs and then it loads all the loose ones. So even if you had a BSA here and a loose one up here, the loose one is going to be the one that shows up in game. Uh, so that's why it has this whole thing on what mods have BSAs, just to uh, kind of show you that these mods have BSA files. Um, one thing, it's something you have to keep in mind when you're building a list, is where to put things, what's in a BSA, what's loose, um, that kind of thing. The other, uh, you can also just extract them too. Um, if you're having issues and you want it, uh, you can extract them with the BSA browser, which is on the Nexus. When you install it, it gives you a nice um, little option to extract. You just double click on them, extract folders, hit uh, select folder, and then it extracts it to loose files, then you just delete the BSA. And then you can refresh this here. And there you go, you, be it, no more BSA. So uh, if you're curious about that, you can go on here, go to BSA browser right here. And this is the mod, you just download this and manually download it, install it. Um, what else? Okay, so the only other one on here is the paperclip. Paperclip means that it has INI files. So if I went to this one, uh, again, nice feature. You click on it, highlights the mod for you in blue. Uh, open and explore. Now go to the INI in here. These INIs will overwrite anything in your default INIs. So you go in here and you can see the values that this. So if you were changing your grass, uh, I'm in grass size on the previous one, do something in your INI and you had this installed, well, no matter what you did in that other one, this is the value you're gonna go. So you have to come in here and actually change this one 
uh, to whatever value you want and then save it and that's what's going to show up in game uh, so that's just something to keep in mind is the paper clips are ini overwrites um it's got automatic updates here if it uh, finds an update uh, this just goes right to Nexus as uh, profiles. I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, extra settings we went over in the first video. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to go over some of the more basics. Uh, it's really important to understand the difference between mods and plugins and the fact that some mods are just files um, and then some actually have a plugin because the plugins are what can break your game if they're messed up or if you try to remove them mid game if you remove just a texture like this it's not going to hurt your game all it's going to do is remove it from the game uh, and it'll load whatever the default is but if i went in and started removing these the game probably has records in the save file looking for these and that's what causes crashes and all that kind of good stuff so um, yeah, so the next video will be the, the actual beginners list. It's going to be an updated version of my absolute beginners video from before with new recommendations, uh, just kind of an updated list since that one I did a little while ago and, uh, that's it. Have a good one.